this very steep pass takes one from the coastal plateau down to the beach at Mboiki on the wild coast. The pass is immersed inside the dense forest canopy for most of its length, which is almost a pity, as the views would be tantalizingly beautifully visible. The pass has some very sharp corners and steep gradients as one gets past the halfway point. There's one particularly nasty hairpin bend which needs to be treated with the utmost respect. Any pass that has an average gradient lower than 1 in 16 is steep and this pass is at 1 in 13 and it'll have your passengers reaching for their imaginary brake pedal and especially so in the very steep sections in the middle of the pass where the gradients get steeper than 1 in 5. This pass would be very difficult to drive if it wasn't paved. Although we've mapped it as a gravel pass, the steepest parts have been concreted which provides essential traction to normal vehicles in wet conditions. The road is a cul-de-sac, so it will always be driven from northeast to southeast first. Due to the available light, we had to film this pass in the opposite direction, which is in the ascending mode. Besides livestock on the road and heavy construction vehicles, be acutely aware that the gravel sections of this pass have been built with an excessive amount of camber. This is to get rid of rainwater as quickly as possible. If you're not in a four-wheel drive vehicle and you traverse this pass in heavy rain, your vehicle could very easily slide into the side ditches. You will require a recovery vehicle to extract you, so rather stick to the middle of the road where possible. For the adventurer wanting to explore the many unique and wild treasures this coast has to offer, Hamboiki offers the privileged opportunity to visit the legendary Double Falls and Cathedral Rock. It's situated in a wilderness area at the mouth of the Mboiki River and is the perfect place for a peaceful, tranquil or adventurous getaway. Inspanned oxen pulling heavy loads are still a common sight on the beaches. Goats and cattle drink from the lagoon, whilst bathers enjoy themselves in the nearby surf. Time has stood still at Mboiki, little has changed in the last 50 to 100 years. The local people are warm, interesting and accommodating, willing to share their piece of paradise with visitors. It's surrounded by dense indigenous forests, with waterfalls gushing into steep gorges or down cliffs straight into the sea. The Magua Tea Corporation, with the biggest tea plantation in the southern hemisphere, lies at the top of the escarpment. There are endless breathtaking views from numerous viewpoints. Activities abound here with hiking trails to suit everyone. Coastal, inland, forests, easy or tough, each trail is an adventure revealing the beauty and the secrets of Ponderland. There are scenic 4x4 drives to many waterfalls and viewpoints. You can also experience the magic of horse riding along the foothills as well as on the beaches of Mboiki. The real star attraction here is of course fishing. There's rock surf and fly fishing, and all of it is offered in abundance. More than 800 species of marine fish occur in this area, so bring your fishing license along. Take a paddle and a canoe and venture out onto the large lagoon where cows will most probably be waiting on the island. Or take a mountain bike, routes to suit every rider from a gentle ride to a daunting climb up the escarpment. Whales and dolphins are frequently spotted from the estuary, especially during the annual sardine run during June, July and August. Mboiki is renowned for the abundant bird life, as well as lepidoptery, which is a branch of entomology concerning the scientific study of moths and the three superfamilies of butterflies. Once you're driving in the forest canopy, if it's a bright sunny day, your eyes will take a little while to adjust to the dappled light in the forest. It's best to slow down to a lower speed as livestock can appear on the road virtually unseen at any point. Driving within a forest canopy is a rare delight in South Africa and this drive is particularly enjoyable. Slow down, roll down your windows and enjoy the moment. The road follows the descending spine of a long ridge forming the natural barrier between two rivers. The Mboiki River is on the east and the Magua River is in the west. At the time of filming in February 2020, there was considerable traffic using this pass, mainly consisting of construction vehicles which are using the pass to access the construction site of the two new mega bridges as part of the N2 toll road. The road is not wide enough to allow overtaking and any oncoming trucks will require both vehicles to stop and inch past each other. 
The biggest town near the pass is of course Lusiki Siki, which receives high levels of rainfall ranging between 874 and 1060 mm of rain per annum. Rainfall is considered unseasonal, although Lusiki Siki receives the majority of its rainfall during summer. Winter temperatures reach their lowest in July, averaging around 8 degrees Celsius at night. Before European habitation in Lusiki Siki, the Amo Mpondo's chief kraal occupied what is now the present town village. In 1894, European settlers started settling in Lusiki Siki after Mpondo land was annexed by the Cape Colony and a magistrate took up residence there. The town has grown enormously in recent times and now covers a large area of the beautiful green hills of the wild coast.